All right, I'd like to welcome everybody to the 26th policy meeting, John Maddox policy meeting to order. I uh, don't believe we have any comments on the agenda items, so I'm going to go straight into policies for review. Um, at this time, I know we have a lot of policies pertaining to instructional materials and library materials. And so I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Graham and the district staff to kind of go through those and maybe start to talk about changes that are being proposed. Uh, at this time, I'm not sure that we're going to pass me on a committee today. I'd like to hear from the district what their recommendations are, as well as what's coming from model policy and from the state department of education so I can kind of understand where all the different proposed changes are coming from um, and then review those. Ms. Graham. Thank you. So we are, um, as you mentioned, we have quite a number of that need to be updated based on the new um, SC Department of Ed Regulation 43 ones that we, and so that is where most of these regulations come from. We are going to start with um, policy guides, maybe, to instructional resources and materials. And so anything that you see redlined in a policy are recommendations from SCADBA for the new model policy and then as we go through them, I will then clarify some of the district's recommendations from it. What was the speaker red lines here in the morning recommendation um, on this policy was um, actually two is that um, the in the second paragraph after the first sentence of the really responsible for selection of special materials and resources is recommended to add as been as this responsibility will be delegated to the training professional staff within the district administration with the review of the form for any materials or resources for which a parent or guardian is in the complaint form, IJMP, or ABC. All from model policy. All of the red line changes are from model. The language I was read with the recommendation of the district. And then the other recommendation of the district is at the bottom of that policy, the last paragraph on notice. This is not um, specifically in line with the regulation. So, what the regulation requires is that the district maintain a complete up to date list um, of our library materials on our website at all times and that. A list of instructional materials to be available to parents on the list. And so the recommendation of the district is that uh, the district will maintain to, to completely change the language, that the district will maintain a complete and up to date catalog of all books and other materials that are available to students through the district's libraries and the media centers, a complete list of other instructional materials that are used in and available to students in any given class, course, or program that is offered, supported, or sponsored by the district. Shall be provided upon reasonable request to any parent and guardian of the student. That language is exactly what happened. Okay, so the, that additional language that you just read that was not provided in our text, correct? So could you talk on the completion of this unique spending that language that you're proposing? And I'd like to review that. Other questions about yeah. um, yeah, no, that the yeah. um, yeah. yeah. policy is IJL library materials collection adoption. So again, the red lines here are changes from the model policy. The first recommendation of the district is in count the third paragraph, it would be the fourth paragraph. The paragraph. Sounds right. Um, where it's, it's the key. It's the key for the thing in the office. And so because this policy is uh, particularly about library materials, but just to kind of take a step back, um, previously our district had sort of separated library materials from instructional materials that are used in classrooms. 
Um, however, under the new regulation, they are all considered sort of under the same review process. And so as we kind of try to model our policies in line with the regulation, um, it is kind of intermixed with the library materials and the instructional material. And so the recommendation from SCADFA is sort of referencing all of the instructional materials. Um, and it talks about being aligned with the state and instructional programs. Um, but because this policy is particularly about library material, it is recommended to change that paragraph to say the school based librarians or media specialists will be tasked with reviewing the library material to ensure that they are aged and developing to the appropriate education is suitable and aligned with the purpose of the state's instruction program. If the library and media specialists determine that the materials do not satisfy the requirements, then the library media specialist will remove the materials. And that is, again, a language almost straight from. So, I guess so we have that paragraph right now, and we just, you know, kind of, it's centralized, and then you get a center of the super age on the book. We're talking about that. And below, we have to be far out. Yes, but I think with the added duties now, there's something we can get. I think if you remember, I mentioned that last year. So you were always looking for a chart and budget together, and I was wanting you to move forward with it. And so we talked about it coming out of our discussion. I'm 100% sure what we're going to have is the data level to time. And, you know, we, we can always find ways to make sure people are getting a little bit, but not sure the job description here is to give us a lot of change. So I'm certain that I have some activity for us. So we're in a lot of districts that you have that. I paired it from my last history to the job duty, but we had somebody who was responsible for all the inspections. And it, it was a library, you know, we were all the inspections. You want, to be not firm, but you, you don't want. Somebody who just needs that change their license to roll in that you really need somebody who can specialists to work with the library that understands the complexity of the So I'm sure yeah, that we can do that if the board is I'm interested. I can see the problem. But it feels like a need from the support side. So we um, and so I don't know, we did in the interim by talking to person. I'm actually third media specialist in the state of the state of the video. So we all want to do something. Yeah, we can do that. We're doing something. We've got a second there. We have like an actual third media kitchen. That's what they do. They need to be on the way. I think that would help with the consistency to the application. Well, that's one that of the requests they made. So, good to see that more capture. I have to see some of them. Thank you for bringing that to our attention, Mr. Department. And any suggestion that you want me to bring, possibly, uh, I could bring something to you that shows what we're currently doing, then it would be a recommendation. It would close through now. Were there any other? Yeah, I mean, sort of to that end, <laughs> under the library media, media center material, there are um, options there that the board would have to um, sort of fill in the blank of the appropriate job title to do that. Um, and so it is the recommendation of the district of both of those options be filled with the library. Any library we can do. There are a couple other ones on this one. Um, 
we uh, twice in the policy uses the word judge the material, but our condition would be worth evaluating. Criteria selection change be in line with any regulation. Um, further down, we had a previous statement in the policy about the material. And so it is the recommendation of the district that that remain in law policy it is not there. Um, but we recommend that it remain so that if someone were to want to give a media center or school certain material, they would go through the same process and have to meet the same criteria as both of them. And then the sentence following that um, is a bit of an expansion on what is required in regulation. And it starts to be even potentially over the structural material. Um, that is not specifically required by the regulation. It was added by CAFA to the model policy. And um, so it's our recommendation that we go to be that sentence. Um, it already states that the board is responsible for considering funds regarding instructional material. Which page and paragraph are you on? Page two, the third paragraph from the bottom. So, um, so it was just the recommendation to the district that I beyond the recommendation. Beyond that, in the next page, the first paragraph on the next page, um, this is something that was in the district's previous policy. The paragraph starts with the division or recognizes. Um, and this is something that we would recommend on um, retaining or on the way of the individual student opt out form that developed last year in the past as part of the policy. So that if there are any materials that a parent does not wish to challenge, but then what their students have access to, they will use that form. Um, it's sort of right. And so we have it lined up. And then, um, Next, the next paragraph is again when the following procedures are established. None of that is in the um, model policy, and so everything from here down gets dropped. However, um, it is the district's recommendation and the district a lot. Um, is the district's recommendation that we maintain a district review level process for materials prior to parents bringing that to the board? The regulation requires. If parents make a reasonable request of the school or the district to try to resolve the issue or to appealing the material to the board. And so it would be our recommendation um, that we maintain similar language to what we had before, which is a review by the district, um, that the complainant shall submit the South Carolina instructional material to the board, period complaint form to the principal of the school when the material is available. If the material is available at multiple schools, the complainant may submit the form to any of the applicable schools. On receipt of form IJLPKECE, the principal shall inform the chief academic officer, and the chief academic officer shall notify the district safety review committee to convene for the purpose of evaluating the material and issuing a decision regarding the question for me. So let me give us an analysis. Are we bypassing the school? Let me be reported as a state. We're going straight to the citizen review district, and then we have like the first line of Reviewing instructional and slide library materials. After a complaint, from the after a complaint, from the yeah, either. So the, 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 the administrator of the school always, you know, will converse with teachers about, you feel free to jump in, you know, about the appropriateness of the material if they have a question. But if there is an official complaint from a parent, it is the district's recommendation that we reduce that process because right now we have the two steps where it's heard of the school and then it's heard of the district and when it's heard before the board. And under the new regulation, um, because it is a very specific prompt test, um, and because it would be applicable across the district, I think we felt like it was a better, more efficient system to go ahead and skip to the district level for consistency across the district 
and to make sure that it would be within the limit of the thing that I have to so report with the school or the school or the and you'd be the first one that you read the book or review the book. So I think the regulation also deals with the have to get parent right. So we will abide by that fraction as well as I think there's a little stipulation five and one. Five per month. And it may also be the same. Yeah. Is that, that is not, that's a great point. I do not. Recall if that is specifically in this policy. Um, we can certainly add it. I mean, because it's in the regulation, we can follow it, but we can certainly make sure. Um, I don't we can probably follow it anyways. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to say that you know, they, they can appeal it technically in the regulation to the state board directly, right? So they have to appeal to the school board. The school board has the option to either hear it or to make a request of the state board that the state would go ahead and hear. And so there are some districts that I've heard that have said, you know, essentially they felt like it was not a good use of their time for the school board to hear it because they know that regardless of the outcome, the parent can appeal to the state board. However, the regulation says that if it has not yet been heard by the school board, it is optional for the state board to undertake it. And so conceivably, the school board could say, we're just going to pass the funds to the state, and they could say, no, we're not getting the limit and bring it back to the school board. So um, the parent cannot go directly to the state board, but our board could choose to make a request to the state board that it be perfect. So like, we can roll that the state board. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Did the state board limit as well? How many they all here per person? Parent? Yeah, and because there's, so they are under the saying that five are completed per month. However, their process is a lot longer. And um, also because it is optional for them to hear it unless the school board has already made a decision, um, you don't know how many, you know, practically they are considering. So here, no matter what, they report a they will reverse it. They can't say, no, we can file our appeal straight. So the, the regulation requires that they make a reasonable attempt for involvement at the school with the district level before appealing to the board. That's really considered like an appeal level. Right. And so the idea would be that they go to the district review committee first, and then they have the option to appeal to the board. And then the board can either hear it or make a request with the state. Um, yeah. 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 If a parent, if their parent has joint custody, I don't handle that. So if yeah, they both are, parents want to complain about that. So that is open to them. Is it per parent even if they're parent? It says per complete. So I think conceivably that is per person, which means per household you could have. And step parents and all that. Okay. Step parents are not technically parents or legal guardians in most situations. So I don't know that they would necessarily have seen them to do it. I mean, it depends. Some um, step parents do have guardianship, but not all staff. Legal guardians. Yes. Okay. And the recommendation that uh, um, district citizens review committee would be picked in the same way that was already established by the board last year. Um, however, because the new regulation um, says the decisions that are made by the committee were made in effect for five years, we have previously been using three years in the district. So the recommendation would be that the committee be um, selected and their tasks expanded beyond library materials to include instructional materials, and um, that they would remain in place for five years to keep track of them all because it doesn't make sense to have. A committee rehear the same materials that they would be I know I kind of mentioned with this to you briefly. I would like for the current committee to finish out their three years, and I'm open to our boards in on this, um, or to just create a new committee that will then serve. So, you know what I mean? If we're going to do one or the other. So, I think that probably, and of course, at the discretion of the board, it, it may make sense to sort of disband our current committee, thank them for their service, and then re select a new committee that would start in line with the timeline policy and run for five years. 
Um, the other recommendation is that um, because we don't know how many challenges there could be, is that perhaps we have um, several people. So our community, we have some perhaps of like administrators, teachers, maybe a specialist. And so um, when we select the district system review committee, we can select, say, you know, five librarians who are willing to serve and five teachers who are willing to serve. And then as complaints come in, they could randomly be generated into the line committee that would review those materials. And that way we have enough people, a large number of complaints. We don't all want to pack out the same seven people on the committee over and over because some of the material um, could be an instructional material that's like a, a video that the students are watching and very quick to review. And it could be a 500 page book. And so then you're asking them to read the whole book and land on that. Um, so it would be our recommendation that um, we have sort of several people who are grouped from each position, and then we would just use like a randomizer to sort of select who would serve on each specific committee when it can like serve now. Yeah, and, and um, I don't know if that's being more discussed at the conference for um, that. I think that's how we first use theirs, and um, it went over very well with their community, and I think it's a good fit. So, would we select this district citizen to review committee with the same process? So there's a um, form that is IJL three perhaps <laughs> and um, and so community members would be able to um, fill that form out and I believe that we discussed last time that um, it would not come from recommendations from administrators it would be publicized in school newsletters etc that we are seeking applications from the district citizen review committee and anyone who that the qualifications served on the committee, like the one in the boxes, um, will be able to submit an application and it would be reviewed anonymously in the committee. When it comes to the instructional review, are we looking at both the circle net committee and also the region one committee? Did they not have some type of committee? So the committee is already comprised of, um, it includes two teachers, two administrators, two media specialists. Maybe it's the But that is the last thing. Oh, you were right. Two. Two. The committee of two. The committee of the committee. That's right. Because we have community members. Yes. So when we redo our citizen review committee, maybe we'll have to look at updating that portion to reflect now. If there's instructional materials, obviously we're gonna want people that are experienced in that area. We're gonna want parents, we're gonna want educators, teachers, and covering at the district review committee to make that information. So I don't think just parents, what you said, it's just parents and parents. Well, maybe we didn't specify it, but not. I think it was asked on the application what their information was, but I do like that. I guess it would be all. It could be helpful. I, mean, I definitely think we should still have family or parents yeah. meeting members, but I think they would be beneficial. I think that's somebody for the instructional material is an aspect that speaks to that a little bit more in depth and everything. In the kind of recommendation. That's all we have for I'm going to hold off. If you could send me the link, it goes to the book. It's like a lot. Yeah, it's like here. you're going to not like to read it right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I could send it to the box. Yeah. All right, next up we have IJ and oh, yes. So when you um, know that, would you be providing us like replacing the red line ones that are showing gas book model with basically just district recommendation and the gas book model of the sheet? So basically the fine lines call it your recommendation. you prefer, yes. I have it right now as commentary. Um, but yes, I can provide them all whatever is. Easier for you all to 
And you can like, and you can make like blue the different recommendations for something. Oh, and sure. yeah. Yeah. Those <laughs> kind of like, I'm just trying to change the banana. Or I can come sit down with you. Yeah. you I don't know. Uh, no, I think I think I can do that. But yeah. Okay. If it's too problematic, just please come. Yeah, yeah. I will. I'm gonna do it, and I will upload it. Too. I can choose. Um. All right. So I J L E one is fairly easy. Um. This was the district's current um complaint form, if you will, concern form um that parents were to fill out if they were challenging a book in our library. Um. And we are now required to use the state inform complaint form. And so if this is just a recommendation to change this to the state form, the state form is already on our website. Um so the secretary should copy and paste it for the regulation. Do you want to go ahead and pass that out It's up to you. I'm just trying to want to do just want to get it off. Okay. That's why I'm yeah. Because otherwise we just have to yeah. 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 yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> that's why I'm just like I don't know. Yeah. 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 All right, the next one is A E C. Public concerns, they complain about structural resources that are added to the floor, are different instructional materials from library materials. And so now that we are making this together, we're going to try to help all compare each other a little bit more. Um, and so you all can see here the recommendations of the model policy. The recommendations of the districts are in the uh, Third paragraph after statement of policy, where it says that the complainant must submit criticism, um, the superintendent, um, which would be you know, the superintendent, from the superintendent to the board, uh, through policy from form A, B, C, D, e, which is the one that we we'll look at. Um, but it says that the complainant, the complaint form will be posted on the district website. I think this is intended to mean the late complaint form, but we wanted to make that clear. And so it's just a recommendation to say that the late complaint form would be there not in. Um, and this is Mr. Farnsworth, where the next one is that they um, up to five complaints per calendar month, but I do think that that would not include it. Um, Scaffa did maintain them as two separate policies. Um, I think instructional materials are a bit different than library materials, so um, I think there is kind of a benefit in keeping them separate, but we do want to make sure that the practice is aligned. Um, the next recommendation within the following paragraph. Um, just adding, as we previously discussed, that the board may request that the state board go ahead and hear the matter. So just including a statement in there um, that rather than hearing the, the appeal themselves, the board may have a state. And then um, the last minutes before the sub appeal, um, this is not a fly, however. So that is referring to materials that can be challenged. And I feel like the word for this probably needs some explanation. So it would be our recommendation to clarify that this is referring to the alternative resource. Is they not um you should not use an alternative resource if it is an agent program to explore resources. <laughs> so if a parent challenges um say a, a novel that a class is reading. Then the teacher may consider giving an alternative assignment that still meets the same standards. But if they challenge something that is a basic program text, like a same group textbook, then the teacher is not required to offer an alternative. Um, and Update administrative rule. The primary recommendations here are under the proposed procedures um, before the review by the board to add 
the same recommendation from IJL that that would be by the District Civil Liberty Committee, which would be aligned with one another. Um, one question that I think we're leaving to the discretion of the board is if you look at where it says we're reviewed by the board, um, so once an uh, appeal does come to the board, uh, the last sentence in that first paragraph says that presentation of information will follow state board policy regarding public participation in board meetings. So because that is unclear as to whether or not that is um, applicable to the complainant and the administration or just to those wishing to make public comment about it. So it was our recommendation to sort of clarify that and say that the board may want to consider permitting the complainant and a representative of the district citizen review committee a longer period of time, five minutes or 10 minutes to present their information and that any other parties would speak in accordance with board policy, which is three minutes left. Because under the new regulation, these are public open hearings and discussions we have in public. Um, it was just our recommendation that you all may want to permit the complainant and the district to provide a little more context than they put in. And um, there is an option there in the next paragraph, you'll see. Um, either to provide oral um, finding or transcribed findings, recommendations for the incentive of our board and then um, you start So you are saying that we can like the citizens of the community have to like need to discuss the material of or yeah, so the board or a board to be able to be helped. So if the new review committee would meet um, in a non-public setting and issue their decision. And then if the parent were to appeal that decision to the board, the board would hold a public hearing on it. And so any information that the board would review would be in a public setting and their discussion about the matter and then their findings the matter would all be public. And um, the recommendation for SCASBA is that everybody who would that the complainant and other interested parties would be allowed to appear and present information in support or opposition of the request, and that that information would be provided following standard board policy. And because that only allows for 30 minutes, it's just our recommendation that the board might want to and the Citizens Review Committee for administration additional time to explain their position and then limit public comment. Yes. So like the initial point is that they have five minutes and they just want to do it. And the board would consider that. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, and then on the top of the next page, there's the subheading evaluating committee. So the regulation permits the board um, for appeals that are going to come before the board to create essentially their own committee of the board. Like we are in today that um, would have just uh, at least three of the board members on it and that group would hear the recommendation, you know, um, the request from the complainant and the administration and that group would make a recommendation to the board. Um, that, uh, certainly that is up to the will of the board. It was our recommendation that we not do that because every the board likes to, you know, have an opportunity for everybody to present for the entirety of the board. So um, I don't know that an evaluating committee um, is something you are interested in. Certainly if it is, we can put that in. But it was our recommendation to just remove that section. I will talk with the board here, but I, I agree we all have an equal voice on this board and I would want everybody to have the opportunity. They want it. Um, the rest of the board feels strong and they would rather have any of that. Everything is just a good one here. Next up is KPCP1. Um, this is just, again, a change from the current request for review of instructional materials to be changed to the safe one. Um, just to cover. If we pull off on that, just sure. Yeah, definitely. And then the last policy for tonight is policy BID board member compensation. 
Um, this is one of the new like the requests of one of them. I'm happy to allow them to speak or if you want to speak. Well, I'm going to start with uh, this was brought to us from several board members to add to this video on the agenda. Um, I do want to discuss one part of it for myself, um, which is the training sponsored by the South Carolina School Board Association and other prior school board conferences. I know I've talked to Dr. Robbins about this. There are other organizations, usually pretty cheap, that offer additional Robert's rules, training, and different things, and I think it'd be beneficial to not necessarily force board members to only use the South Carolina School Board Association. So I would like to have this policy to say other relevant training or educational training or whatever verbiage y'all because again, like I know when I first got elected, we I mean, had like a 15 minute Robert's rule training. Yes, yeah. And that, you know, there's other work conventions that offer like good in the two hour trainings for like $20 that are you know, professional development information. So I'd like to see us broaden that a So you're just saying change that second part of the thing, but require a group of word and professional development? I mean, obviously, you could say like at the discretion of like being the superintendent, like. Or I don't know who you put in. I don't know who you submit it to. All you have to do is change that second one prior to question go. So do we have to like vote on a list of them or how do we yeah. I mean the board is going to be in here we send board page. So so what are you proposing? But just instead of saying the three four conferences, you can say something like prior group people in order to professional development opportunity. Yeah. Okay. It's not just a conference, but it's like a Yeah, it's right. I just think you should be able to receive training for the of perspectives and things that are offered that certain again. That one's stuck out here. And I paid for stuff myself to take training. Uh, but if we had it in our budget, we can't you can that could potentially like with new board members coming on help them be more effective and better job. That's or possibly And then I will defer to you as well if she has any other recommendations or discussion. Yes. I'm not really sure how we presented that by Lee Roberts, and so I will definitely sign it. I will go there. But um, I was talking with some folks, and they were saying that the board had not seen a rating in here about people here. And I think that's a long time. Now, I'm not sure what the goals did before. I thought prior to my being on the board, but um, I spent a lot of time in my bar going from place to place. And I would do it even if I didn't get paid, but it wouldn't help if there was additional conversation. Um, not only are we traveling, but we are also spending time. Like I had to sit underlying and high, like it's something I'm used to basically being familiar with this material. So, additional material that I made, besides that I need in order to make decisions, I have to research it. I can tell it does a lot of research. And send me names for that should be sufficient. And I'm sure other board members well. And I'm not saying that we should get paid for everything that we do, but that's not why I didn't even know we were basically getting paid. And then I said, like, oh, that's good. So, um, but I found out in my 30 something years in education that if you don't ask for something, board might only want to do it to me, especially when it comes to finances. And, um, I am a, not that matters, but I am my own, I have a spouse that basically helps balance out whatever I spend, uh, whatever it is I directly in. And so that would be beneficial to me. I am willing to go with whatever the remainder of the board say and not be upset. But if I did not speak my mind regarding that, I would be simple. So I'm basically saying, I do believe that we are worthy of everything. 
And I don't know how you present that in order to make it global. You yeah. could make a recommendation for a certain increase. It's like, so if you like increase the size from 700 per month and like $100 more for each area, you could. Or we could open it up to the board discussion and see where it feels. Well, before we move on and talk about next things, first of all, if they're board members that have an objection to that, and um, you know, I know some people don't get any compensation, so but you everybody still has a right to voice their opinion. If anybody wants to, I think they would shout because I'm mad at myself because I've heard it all and also kept looking at it. Um, the challenge is that the school association has. Document or significant rates for all of the students across the city. And I am just thinking, obviously, looking at it, we are fairly well compensated compared to our other working across the state. So that, that's probably a challenge, right? To say, hey, we want X and more, would you got to be cut? I would say the majority of districts get the word of district. But also, I did look at some of those and I saw that minimal amount of But I guess my question would be are they doing the same type of work? Investment in company? They should be. Well, we know it should be, but that does not happen. In the other, in, so that's the first part. And then the other part, I would say it, this will work. It believes that, that yes, we should go to tax money for the students. My personal opinion would be that that doesn't take factors for the next city for the state of the So essentially, we're not going to sell ourselves for the future. And I, you know, I even thought about that. I am running, I believe, I'm being opposed, and there's a change. I'm a believer, so I believe I'll be back in the board. But in case I'm not on the board, I don't have a problem with someone that might replace me or someone else. But them being compensated, okay. Well, I kind of thought about that, but I'm not sure if it'll work. Um, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I just find out, as I said before, money back into education, people will only give you what you need. Put out there for them, you no request. They don't usually make any kind of yes, you do that. You know, you know, I mean, again, I'm just going to say, you know, the patient is, uh, I think the UO way to ask people to be part of the short of funds and, you know, patient with more than these and we can't pay our teachers in time. And we talk about paying ourselves in the order to Yeah, I get that. Well, I have a problem. I can't explain to you know, me. I can't explain to everybody that I can explain to myself. So um, I understand in our discussion what you said earlier, but in education, when is there ever enough money? Whatever. Yeah, we're seeing the same thing. I agree. But I'm just saying, I think when you. You go to the teacher and say, Hey, I can't pay you X. But but then they turn around and they see the code less than pay yourself a little bit more. A year is 20 bucks. And you're going to get 620 bucks. But everybody got it. Everyone was given an increase in shoes. And I'm saying, when you look back at it, um, if the information is true, 15 years ago, the last time they actually received. Increase. So, well, and, it was 2008. Yeah. So you got to, and again, so where did And I didn't really research when you say when, because it didn't matter when. I wasn't on the board then, and I didn't I didn't know what we did. So I can't compare that. And, and, okay. and so just like when I was sore, though, it's my favorite, it was not to do so here. So our board in the previous 2008 was $25 a meeting, so a lot of other instruments. Well, it's not a big thing. And so, what was happening was you had more members right. with ridiculous amounts of miles, like mm -hmm. thousands of miles a month, so that they could capture 
Well, it's fun, and so I think it's good. I'm not going to be able to make sure we're just going to get out of hand. We're just going to get more flat and keep it a little bit I do still, and then again, if we're in our current policy, we really still take mileage. But I didn't have additional mileage to claim, and it was, you know, obviously, you know, I'm saying it's like, I think, yeah, it's not English. So it's the end of the I could be an you could ask for maybe some sort of. Uh, it may do that to a path. Maybe you end this with mileage up to the end of the path. Because we don't want to have the path before. Because maybe if you listen to the same, then you want to do $600 a month. It's made money based on whatever the numbers are. Thank you. 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 Thank it, it might be about that, right? So, once more, let me explain. It's not the money for me, it is when you put yourself out there to serve. And certain things I think you should be compensated. And then what are saying? And we are, we have to so say, your time is valuable, our time is valuable. That's why some folks are like, oh, why do you get paid? Absolutely, you should get paid. If you're doing this, if you're doing this job correctly, we need to find a good, we need to have a good, we need to have a good service. That's your time. It should be valuable. It should be paid for. Well, let's put it this way. Like I said, and then we're going to, it doesn't matter. I would have a service that is not going to be paid for. Right. So I think it's important to understand that the service is going to be paid for. And that's what I'm going to do. 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 And that's what I'm going to do according to guidelines in business schools, et cetera, travel about the division. I'm still going to that. I'm still one of those that only who maybe don't ask for something that I'm a volunteer. So that's where I am. Well, I definitely understand and you're working very well with every day, every board member does. I think when I talk to people most of the time to tell them how many hours I spend driving around and talking on the phone and researching and visiting school and showing up to volunteer and analyzing separate meetings. Like they're like, you work how many hours a day? You drive how many miles? So I understand that. Um and well, I, the public actually their whole thing is what is I didn't know y'all knew all that. Yeah, I didn't know that part of the community. They think we show up sometimes twice a month, so I understand that. And I also understand Mr. Bronsworth's perspective of, you know, we're struggling to pay our teachers. And what does that say when we're like, okay, let's increase our own pay? So, um, and I, I really hate the idea of being responsible for increasing that. that. That was not a thing. That's like very awkward to be in. Um, so, I'm open to suggestions if you would like to suggest maybe a mileage amendment to the policy. That's something Mr. Graham could bring to the next policy meeting. We could discuss that. Um, if you think that would be something you would want to include, if you would like to propose a increase, um, we can always send that to the board for a vote. You know, it's not just my opinion, it's just not Mr. Farnsworth's opinion. It's not. Chester Guthrie's opinion, we have seven board members, so it's the will of the board to approve that increase in revenue. Um, I'm not going to tell you you can't recommend an increase, or you can't recommend a mileage increase. Um, I typically empathize and understand that three sons, two are teenagers that are eating me on a house and home, and six grand a year is not a lot. Um, so I get it. I get both sides of it. So um, I'm open to the where we want to go with this. We would like to entertain an amendment if we would. I would like to amend that we can afford I do to you five fifty dollars more. And so Ms. Graham, if you would like to do uh, that would you like that to go to the board for a vote or would you like to notify the board that we're making that recommendation and like that the next policy? It wouldn't go for over the time. Like the next person would be 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 the next person
Um, it's really, I'm going to defer you um, to my vice chair if you would like it to go for first reading um, as it's your proposed recommendation, or if you would like to notify the board and allow them to discuss it. I would prefer that they basically discuss it so that, you know, everybody can have their say. And I will say if it does come up to the next policy any meeting, and in those first reading, would it pass before the election? If it comes back to policy again, it would not take effect until that. Well, yeah. that would be the goal, or not, but would it go through first and second reading before it would go through first reading? It will not, so that essentially new board would have to go to for their own reading. I think that we um, don't <laughs> so I think it would be first reading under the current. So if it would come back to the third. So if you would like the current board, no, that's, I, I'm sorry, I, I think it would not So yes, it would be, so we have to read for, I just want to make sure to make it aware of if it maybe comes to policy committee on September 23rd, and we go to the board on the 14th and the eighth. We only had one. Uh -huh. well, like, so oh, because they, of I think because of yes. the operating season, the doctor That's why I just like, I'm like, there's some reason why I felt certain that it was only going through one reading. So, yeah, it would only go through one reading because it would come into policy committee on September 23rd, first reading on October 28th, and then the second reading would be November 11th. Um, and that would be that would be after the election, but before results are certified. So, Potentially, there's not enough. So, yeah. essentially, if you would like the current board to vote on it for the next board, you would have to we have to have enough committee to stay with the next board meeting for the president. Otherwise, the other board will our board will vote the first meeting, and the other board, whoever that will be, will vote for him. Trying to explain. Oh, I, I understand. We're out of time. So. The only thing I want to do is put it out. So, yeah. perhaps if you bring it back to policy committee, you have these two separate boards. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Let's do that. And Mr. I don't think we have any further public comments. So, I will adjourn this meeting. Thank you. Thank you.